All right, today we're going to look at code completion in Hyde. The basic idea that we're going to do is, is implement using autocomplete some code completion. It's not that difficult to do. Uh, the first thing we do is just add the high mode to the AC modes list so that we know to use it. And then the rest of it is basically getting a list of variables, functions, macros, and known keywords that are possible completion candidates. So I do a hybrid of, of things in this, and we'll, we'll go through them in a, in a bit. So first, we're going to look at how do we get the known keywords for Emacs completion in high. And if you go to this, uh, this URL, you can see you know, sort of how the, this is all done. But I defined a function that can retrieve all of the keywords, all the functions, all the macros, all the compiler commands in high. And this function for Emacs completion just takes all of those and compiles it into a regular list of strings that Emacs can read. So we have a open paren, close paren, and then a list comprehension that just joins all of these keywords by strings. And I unmangle the underscores to dashes, which probably is the right thing to do um, for most cases, but it might not be perfect. OK, so then uh, we create a source. Uh, for the AC source um, keywords and it has uh, just a list with one property the candidates and here we use list b eval high to run that command and this will run that command in a REPL and re uh, return the string result which we read in uh, via Emacs Lisp and suddenly we have a list of strings that are possible. Okay so that's already pretty good uh, sometimes I like to have the definitions of functions and macros in the current file available uh, for completion. So here we, we use Emacs Lisp to parse the current file. It's not very sophisticated. We go to the beginning of the buffer, look for all the functions or macros, and in this group right here, extract out a name. It's basically uh, whatever is between this definition, some spaces, and the next space. So that's going to retrieve all the functions and macros. I'm not doing aliases now because I haven't used them uh, too much. And finally, it'd be nice to have variable names. So a lot of scripts will have set v and let statements. And we probably want to be able to use those variable names. So here we do, uh, it's a little bit longer function. Uh, here we're going to look for all of the set v uh, statements. And we will go to the beginning of those matches, read the expression, and then this, this sets the set variables to every other, um, every other element after set v. Right? So basically the odd elements. And then for the let statements, the variables are bound inside a vector. And so again, we look for the let, go to the beginning, read the expression, and there should be uh, the first element of, of the list, or the second element with, uh, of the list should be a vector. And here we um, do the same thing. This is this expression right here is just a, a little trick to convert a vector into a list. And then we take uh, again the um, every other element as as the variable name, and we return that list. Okay, so then we uh, take those two functions. Here we define two new variables uh, for the definitions and uh, defins and macros. Here for the variables. And then finally, we just have to set the AC sources to use these three things. You could use the, uh, you could use something else, but in high sources, I only want these three uh, as possibilities. These, this gets run in a hook function when high mode is enabled. And we set the trigger uh, key to tab and make sure autocomplete mode is on. All right, so that should be good to go then uh, once everything is loaded. And so we'll look here and, and check it out. So here uh, I have uh, started something. If I start typing boring and tedious, I can now press tab to automatically complete it, and that works out pretty good. Down here, uh, we test a variable that's in a set V. So here, as I start typing, I can uh, automatically complete that. And then down here, maybe I have some function, and I want to start typing it in, and it automatically completes uh, with this. And then we can actually run this. And it's not a very interesting uh, program. The, it takes a little while to run because uh, it actually spawns the, the high REPL uh, to run it. So that's it. It looks like we have some rudimentary uh, code completion capabilities that, that could be helpful for writing high.
high code in the future. That's it.